Hi, this is Megay Arena, an affiliate of the Nero Dose Ministry. I'm your Bible teacher, Minister Dennis Rogers. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. When I use that scripture over there that I'm quoting from, that's Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 4, God has blessed us. The us is the elect. God has elected and chosen him a family before the foundations of the world. Because if God did not choose him a family before the foundation of the world, no one would come to him. The Bible tells us that the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. That's quoted from, that's, I'm quoting from Romans chapter 14, verse number one. As a matter of fact, we can look at it. It says, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. They, they are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Here at, here at Mege Arene, an affiliate of the narrow dose ministry, we define our words. We go back to the original text. We do have the original text. The original text is the interlinear Bible. This is the text that was used by the early church fathers. This is the text that King James and those of his translators, the secretaries of King James, this is the text that they use to translate the 1611 King James Bible. That was for the people in England. There was a Geneva Bible for those in France. Luther had a translation in German for the German people. Many of the, many of the so-called pastors and biblical teachers in this world, they don't know that. Tyndale had a translation. He had a translation of the Geneva Bible. For those, for, for those that was with John Calvin, you had one for the Germans, which was called the Lutheran Bible. We don't understand that the original text is the Textus Receptus. The Textus Receptus is written in Hebrew and Greek. In Old Testament, Hebrew and Chaldean. In the New Testament, the Greek language. Our first translation was the Septuagint, the Alexandria text. That's called the Septuagint. Sept translated based on, based on the Greek, the Macedonians, who, has, who had took over and established themselves all over the world under Alexander the Great. And one of his generals, Ptolemy Philadelphus, is the one who ordered the translation of the Septuagint Bible. If you see it, sometimes you see it, they have the L770. This means L770, L, X, X, and when sometimes it's Sept. That's the Septuagint, spelled Sept. To a gent. It's called the Septuagint. It means 70. It was 70 scholars, or excuse me, 72, because he took six. He took six from each tribe. He took six from each tribe. And if he took six from each tribe, that's 12, that was 72, that he used to translate the Septuagint Bible. That's why it's called the Septuagint. Now, I've been teaching on the American gospel and deism. That's what I've been teaching on. And that's the series we're doing now is an American gospel. The American gospel, <coughs> excuse me, the American gospel is another gospel. I'm teaching and I'm reading things out of this book called The American Gospel by John Meacham. I'm reading out of this, The American Gospel out of here. I'm reading out of other books, <clears throat> Religion in America. I'm reading about what I went through. I'm going to go into this book I'm going to go into this book right here and teach you guys on the color of Christ. Where did we get the white Jesus from? Then I got other books here I'm going to be teaching you going through about Ethan Allen. Ethan Allen was the first American deist in these United States of America. And more particularly, I'm going to be reading and teaching you out of the Jefferson Bible. Before I go, into, before I go there, though, I want to read you something out of John Meacham, The American Gospel. The American gospel is another gospel. The American gospel is another Jesus. Jefferson, Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and the so-called founding fathers, they did not believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In my last teaching, I brought them out. I brought that out, that they didn't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Neither did the philosophers in the 17th and the 18th in the 18th century. So I read some excerpts out of this book to let you guys know out there that this country 
was not founded upon Christianity. And I want to open up reading uh, an excerpt from this book in the appendix in the back, letting us know that this country was not founded upon Christianity. Now, I, I wanted to bring the song, the United States Marine song of Tripoli, because that's what this, that's where they got that line from in the United States Marine song, from the halls of Mount Tezuma to the shores of Tripoli, from the halls of Mount Tezuma to the shores of Tripoli. That phrase, the shores of Tripoli, came from the treaty of peace that was established between the Arab nation and the United States of America. The treaty of peace and friendship between the, between the United States and the Bay and subjects of Tripoli of Barbary. In 1796, the American diplomat Joel Barlow negotiated a treaty between the United States and the Islamic nation of Tripoli of Barbary. In 1796, the American diplomat Joel Barlow negotiated a treaty between the United States and the Islamic nation of Tripoli of Barbary. The negotiations began under George Washington, and the treaty went to the Senate in the first months of John Adams' administration. It passed unanimously on June 7, 1797, after being read aloud. The treaty, including Article 11, was widely discussed and published. Article 11, as the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. I'm gonna read it one more time. Article 11, as the government, this is the treaty of peace that they sent to the Islamic, the Islamic nation of Tripoli of Barbary, as the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. They do now, they do now, they do have enmity against the laws of Muslims right now. In 2018, the United States of America has laws, has, excuse me, the United States of America has hatred, that's what the word enmity is, against the laws, religion, and tranquility of Muslims. They do now. They passed this Article 11 so that they can be able to go over there and ship back and forth the goods and produce from that area of Africa. That's where Barbary was located, close to Africa. As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself, the United States of America, no character of enmity against the laws, religions, or tranquility of Muslim, Muslims. In 1797, they call them Muslim men. In 1797, in 1797, in 1797, Muslims, the Muslims, before I don't know if you know this, Farrakhan was called Muslim men. Make sure I spell that right, M-U-S-S-E-L. Yeah, they was called Muslim men, M-U-S-S-E-L-M-E-N. That's what Muslims was called. In 1797, Muslims called Muslim men. That's what they was called in 1797. They were not called Muslims in 1797. This is in Article 11. As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on a Christian religion, as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims, and as the said states have never have entered, listen to this, 
And as the said states have, excuse me, and as the said states never have entered into any war or act of hostility against the Muslim or the Mohammedan, Mohammedan, Ma, say, I'm, say how far we don't change, they call it the Mohammedan. Yes. They, they call them the Mohammedan nation. They're just another name for Muslims. They're just showing you how far removed we are from what they believed in the 18th century, okay? Amen. So you got two different words they call Muslims, Muslim, then they call Mohammedan, they call them Muslim. This is in 1797, Op. And as the said states, listen to this, have never entered into any war or act of hostility against any Muslim nation. They have now. Yes. Iraq and Iran. Yes. Hello? Yeah, See how far we have re removed from it? Yes. Mm -hmm. See how hypocritical this United States is? Yeah. See why man can't govern man? It is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of harmony existing between the two countries. Mm -hmm. That is a lie, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's not like that in 2018, is it? No. I'm going to read that again. America's America is a hypocritical nation. Article 11, as the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, as it has in itself, the United States of America, as the United States of America has in the United States of America, no character of hatred against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. And as the said states, that's the United States. Never have entered into any war or act of hostility against any Muslim nation. It is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce. That's a promise. Shall ever. Shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. Mm -hmm. That's how hypocritical America is. America is not a Christian nation. This nation was not founded upon Christianity. I don't care what historian or what writer try to make it sound like it. It is. It's not. America believes in America is deist. De deistic. D-E-I-S-T-I-C. They believe in deism, deism. The denominations believe in deism. They are deists. Well, I ain't never heard that before in my life. Where you get that from? That's because your past is a knucklehead. He's dumb and he's stupid and he don't study and he don't know what deism is. I'm going to read to you what deism is. I read to you before and read to you again what deism is. Deism is a noun. French dismay, a dismé, D-E-I-S-M-E, Latin dus. Come from the Latin, Latin dus is the Latin word for God. Dus is the Latin word from God. I'm quite sure that's where we get Zeus from, a positive. Deus or Zeus, positive, because in the, in the Greek, in the Greek, some of your ZDs, some of your words are pronounced ZD like zoot. So I'm quite sure that's where we get our word Zeus from. I mean, that's, I'm sure that's where we get the word deuce from the word Zeus. Because the Greek was before the Latin. This is Latin. This is Latin. And this is Greek. So I'm quite sure they get that Latin word from the Greek. I'm positive because the Greek was before the Latin. Okay. Deus. Deism. God, deuce God, the belief in the existence of a God. So they just like the Jehovah Witness. They believe in a God. They believe in, they believe in belief, belief, 
in <coughs> a God. They don't believe in, they don't believe, let me put this up in red, put this up there so you can distinguish it. So I hope you can see, they don't believe in the God. They don't believe in the God. They believe in a God. They don't believe in the God. And when I'm talking about the God, when I'm talking about the God, I'm talking about the God of Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the Lord Almighty. The God is the Lord all mighty or say it another way spell it another way the Lord <laughs> all might might that is Jesus the Christ That's what I'm going to be talking about. Thomas Jefferson did not believe in Jesus the Christ. He believed that Jesus was a moral man, as the rest of them did. As Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, John Thomas, uh, Samuel Adams, John Adams, all of those. I need to get bring my other book. Who throw me your book? <laughs> those who signed the Declaration of Independence. Do you have yours, Mark? No, you yes. don't. You do? Yeah. You got it marked? Yes, I do. Well, you got it marked. Livingston here. Sherman. Huh? I have it marked. All um, right. I don't have well, a tab, don't, though. You don't know. All right. Do you have yours marked? I don't know what page it is. Who got theirs marked over there? Who got it? Who got that book? Oh, you. <laughs> the signers of the Declaration of Independence. You got your. You got the colonies here. You got the committee. Well, you, you got a few names here. The five committee of five. You got John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Robert S. Livingston. You said you got it marked. Mm -hmm. I don't see no in here where you got it marked. See, can you find it right quick? See, can you find it right there? But those that signed the Declaration of Independence, they did not believe in the God. They did not believe that Jesus was the Christ. They said that Jesus was just a moral man. Just like everybody else. The United States is a let us make us a name system. That's what the United States is. Let me read some of this stuff I got in here on, on, uh, hello, on the founding fathers. They not, did not believe Jesus was the son of God. That's what they didn't believe. They believed in a God. It's on page four. They believe in a God. What? The signers? On page four. Those that signed? Yeah. Yes. I I just yeah. didn't yeah. highlight it. Oh, you got them, the, those the sign? Yeah. It's on page, page four. four. Come on, chunk it over here again. All right. Thank you, son. All right. Thank you, Mike. Page four. Okay, yes. Meanwhile, these men did not believe in, these men did not believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. They believed in a God. They didn't believe in the God or the Lord Almighty, the Lord Almighty, Jesus the Christ. They said Jesus was just a moral man. On the 10th of June, three days after Richard Henry Lee introduced the resolution of independence. The independence, the independence of the United States was the independence from the rule of Britain. We're going to be going through this because you guys don't understand what the Declaration of Independence entailed. It was voted to appoint a committee to prepare a declaration to the, to the effect of the said first resolution. This is the committee. This is not the signers, okay? That's not the signers, Mike. Those, that's the committee. Charles, I've seen your committee. Drafting the declaration. Let me see what I find. And those that's not the, those are, that's wrong. Those are not, I've seen the committee. Those are not the signers. I wanted the signers. It was in here somewhere. Uh, drafting the Declaration, Literary the Philosophy, Declaration of the 19th Century, 224. It's not just, those are not the signers. I know it's in here. They got everybody to sign it. We have to find that later. 
but I'm gonna leave this up here. The report of the committee of five, see that's what you got, Charles. Yeah. That's those not on the signers. Okay. Those who put their name on it. Oh, there you go, I got it. Here you go, right here. The signatures. It's on page number 192, right? Yep. That's what I want right there. All right, the signatures. Uh, on the parchment copy, which only a few are now legible, are given. John Hancock, Samuel Chase, uh, uh, the Jefferson, Benjamin Harris, just reading some of them, George Taylor, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Rush, very important, Benjamin Rush, Geo Walton, and you can... Hear these names and these streets are named, <laughs> these streets are named after these men in the, right here in the city of Chicago, all over the United States of America. You got, you got, I'm calling out some of these names of the street. Thomas Jefferson, mm -hmm. William Whipple, that's on the west side. How about Samuel Adams and John Adams? Mm -hmm. How about Robert Treat Payne, mm -hmm. that Payne Street? How about Braxton, Carter Braxton? How about Philip Livingston? How about James Wilson? How about George Taylor? How about Oliver Walcott? How about George Walton? John Hancock. Francis Lightfoot Lee. Abra Clark. Clark Street. Mm -hmm. Etc. How about John Witherspoon? Mm -hmm. These are the street names. That they, how about Caesar Rodney? Yeah. These are the names. How about Jay Smith? These are the names. How about Benjamin Franklin? Did I say that? Yes. Franklin, yeah. These are the names of the streets of those who signed the Declaration of Independence. You can't see it. This is the drafting notes. Oh yeah, they go to signatures right there. Those are the ones who sign. Ain't no black man name on there. No black man name is on there, okay? They didn't declare independence for the black man. They declared independence of white Anglo-Saxon America from the rule of the British. We're going to be reading this and going into this. Be that right there for a minute. But let me get into, let, let you know what we're teaching here. What a deist is. Belief in the existence of, of a God on completely, simply, entirely, plainly rational grounds without reliance on revelation. We do not need no revelation from the Holy Spirit, they said, or do we rely on the authority of the scriptures? The Baptist, the, 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 Baptist, the Church of God in Christ, Apostolic Pentecostal, the churches in the city of Chicago do not rely on revelation and authority of the scripture. The only ministry that I know of in the city of Chicago that relies on revelation and authority of the scripture is the Neverho Dose Ministry. These denominations, these denominations in this city do not rely on the authority of the scripture. They do not serve. I said what? Serve. 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 I said serve. That means to be a bond slave, to be a doulos. That's the word doulos. They are not servants. They are not servants. They are not doulases. Doulos. They are not servants or do losses of, the, of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not the Lord of these denominations here in this United States of America. And I'll be there in a minute. <clears throat> they don't rely on revelation, nor do they rely on authority. The churches in the city of Chicago are deists. You see these churches on, 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 on CAN TV on 36? All of them are deists. And you are what a deist. I ain't never heard that before. I know it. Because that's what you are. <clears throat> it says, belief in the existence of a God on completely, simply, entirely, plainly, rational grounds, human reason, 
without reliance. Human reason, reason is good because God gave man reason. But reason must rely on revelation and authority of the, of, of the scripture. All men have reason. We're not saying that. We're saying that these men, a deist is one who relies on reason only. No revelation, no authority over his reason. And this is what many in, my, in this ministry don't understand. You rely simply on your reason. We do not at the Narrow Dose Ministry rely on reason only. Our reason must be overruled or our reason must be governed. Our reason must be managed by the Holy Spirit. All reason. Reason by itself is evil. Reason by itself is evil. And deism, deism is belief in the existence of a God, implying that there's many other. A is an indefinite article. The is a definite article, implying that it's only one. Belief in the existence of a God. Farrakhan believed in a God. The Jehovah Witness believe in a God. The Baptists believe in a God. Church of God of Christ believe in a God. Uh, apostolic Pentecostal, a God. The Moors believe in a God. Hebrew Israelite believe in a God. The Mormons believe in a God. We at the Narrow Dose Ministry believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is not the God of Ishmael. He is not the God of of Edom. He is not the God of Japheth. He is not the God of Ham. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Ishmael, not Edom, not Japheth, and not Ham. He is the God of Israel. Belief in the existence, deism, belief in the existence of a God on completely, simply, entirely, plainly, rational grounds, what my mind tell me. Without reliance on revelation or authority, especially the 17th and 18th centuries doctrine that God created the world and its natural laws, but takes no further part in its functioning. That began when Isaac Newton okay. discovered the natural laws. Once Isaac Newton, Newton discovered, should have brought my book on him, I got him too. Once he discovered the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, once he attained the knowledge of natural laws, he called God the God of mathematics. He called God the God of, he's the God, he is the mathematician. And that's when everything changed. That's when everything began to change. I'm going to teach you that and read that to you too. But deism had a double rootage. First of all, deism may be traced back to the 17th century group of men of latitude in England. In England. In England. Who sought, who sought to overcome the divisions among so-called Christians. You had the Protestants. The Protestants was the Lutherans, the Calvinists, uh, the, Ang Ang the, Ang Anglo the Anglican, the Anglican, the Anglican, Anglicanism, Anglican, Anglicanism. Excuse me. You had the Lutherans. You had the Calvinists. You had the Anglican Church, and you had the Roman Catholic. All of them would say they was Christian. You had Luther. 1500s, nailed his 95 theses to the church in Germany. He was the first one to start going against the Pope in 1500. Followed along on John Calvin. He followed along too. I'm going to teach you that. After them, you had the Anglo-Saxons. That's the Anglo Anglican church. Those was those in England. Those people was close to the Roman Catholic. So your three Protestant groups was the Lutherans, Calvin, Calvinists, 
and the Anglicans. Those was the ones that was protesting Roman Catholicism. The Anglicans was closer to Roman Catholicism than any other two. The first two, Luther and Calvin, totally broke away from the Roman Catholic Church. So in England, you had the Anglicans. It was called Anglicanism. 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 You had the Anglican Church. These was Anglo, Anglo Saxons. Those was Robin Hood now. Those was the Anglo Saxons. Robin Hood was Anglo Saxon. Mm -hmm. That's what he was. Hello? Yes. His dick, they was in England, right? Yes, yep. it was. Who who did Robin Hood protect? The king. Uh, who was it? Who? The king. King who? Arthur. King, nope. No, it wasn't Arthur. King George. Oh, sorry. George. Yeah, yeah, man. King George. That's one of my favorite movies. I know that, Errol Flynn. They call it the king's deer, the king's meat. Mm -hmm. and, and they was fighting against his son, his brother, who was trying to take over the kingdom. Robin Hood was in love with Lady Mary. Lady Mary. Lady yes, Mary. sir. All right. Deism had a double rootage. First of all, it may be traced back to the 17th century group of men of latitude in England, in England, who sought to overcome the divisions. The divisions was Lutheranism, Luther, Calvin, and Anglican. Those were the divisions. So they didn't want and Roman Catholicism. All of them called themselves Christians, just like you got today. The Baptists say they're Christians. But they differ from Church of God of Christ. Church of God of Christ different from Pentecostal apostolic. Apostolic mm -hmm. different from Mormon. Mormon, even Farrakhan say he a Christian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hebrew Israelite ain't gonna claim Christianity. Because they believe, everybody believes Christianity is Roman Catholicism. <laughs> Roman Catholicism is not Christianity. Roman Catholic, what is Roman Catholicism, Ronnie? Paganism. Paganism <laughs> is pagan Roman Catholic. It is not Christianity. I would never call a pagan Roman Catholic a Christian. I would never call a Baptist a Christian. I would never call a church of God in Christ a Christian. Those are denominations. Christianity means to be pure from man. Christianity means Christ in a man. Thomas Jefferson did not believe Christ was in a man. In the form of the Holy Spirit. The Baptists don't believe that. Pentecostal apostolic don't believe that. The Mormons don't believe it. Hebrew Israelites don't believe it. They believe the Holy Spirit is Gabriel. Nobody believes like us. And I'm talking about us, I'm talking about those of us that have been elected from the foundation of the world. Y'all do not believe like us. We have no man-made doctrine in our, in our religion. We have no man-made doctrine in our religion at all. We support no man-made doctrine. We support no denomination. We are not a denomination. God is a denomination all by itself. The denomination that God recognizes is only one denomination God recognizes. There's only one denomination God recognized and God instituted. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob's name was changed. It came directly from God. There wasn't nobody on earth called Israel. Israel is a spiritual name. It comes from the man of God. Y'all don't understand that. That's why Paul said they that are of Israel are not all Israel. That's right. Children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. That's what it tells us. That's what Paul said. I don't get no care what a dumb Hebrew Israelite said. Paul said they are not all Israel who are Israel. And he was from the stock of Benjamin. Amen. That Hebrew Israelite cannot tell you what stock he from. Mm -mm. <laughs> now, there's nothing but vain Genealogies. genealogies. It don't mean Amen. nothing no more because it's spiritual. Amen. Now there ain't nothing but vain genealogies. Paul, that's why Paul said he counted as dumb. First of all, it may be traced back to 17th century group of men of latitude in England who sought to overcome the divisions among so-called Christians. The so-called, see, so I put that in there. That's not in the book. 
when I was writing the definitions down, I, I, I put in my book, so-called Christians. That don't come from the definition. That comes from my understanding of the scriptures. Because they was first called Christians at Antioch. And Christian was a derogatory term. It wasn't a term of endearment or a term of friendship. It was a term of insult. They was insulting them when they called them Christians. Now Christianity is a term, to be called a Christian, is a term of respectability. I am a Christian. And I don't have no tolerance for nobody else to call. Don't you call yourself a Christian around me. You call yourself a Christian around me, you got trouble because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drill you. What do you mean you're a Christian? What is a Christian? Christians suffer. That's what Christians do for righteousness sake, for Christ's sake. That's why we're called Christians because Christ is in us. We represent Christ. We're suffering for Christ. We don't put up with no denomination. We don't tolerate no other religion. None. We don't even consider them religions. By suggesting that only, excuse me, in England who sought to overcome the division. This is why deism was started. Because the people were, were disgusted with Luther, Lutherism, Calvinism, Anglicanism, and Roman Catholic. They were fighting against each other. They all were white. You had the Germans fighting against the French. You had the French fighting against England. You had England fighting against Italy. Roman Catholicism. You had Luther who was German. You had John Calvin who was from France. You had the Anglicans, Anglo-Saxon who was from England. And you had the Roman Catholics. From Italy. From where? Italy. From Italy. All of them was white. Wasn't no black man in on nothing. That's why I keep telling you you're white and you don't even know it. The American gospel is a white man's gospel. That's what the American gospel is. That's the white man's gospel. That's the white man's Jesus who your grandmama had hung up in her living room with the other two gods, Martin Luther King and John F. Kennedy. Some even had Linda Bean Johnson. Nobody ever seen my God. Nobody ever seen my Lord. No man has seen my Lord. No man has seen him. How are you going to pay a picture of him and you have not seen him? And see, we got documentation. We can tell you exactly where that picture of white Jesus come from. We document everything. We can tell you exactly when the white Jesus came. The white Jesus didn't come till the Mormons came. John Smith is the one who instituted the white Jesus. Then after that, everybody started painting Jesus white. Your mama didn't know it. Your grandmama didn't know it. Your great grandmama didn't know it either. Your pastor in the poor pit don't know it. Some of you still got the picture of the white man's Jesus hung up in your, in your church right now as I speak. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. It's the white man's Jesus. Deism was reduced to three essentials. They said God exists. He is to be worshipped. Now they say God exists. And they said that God is to be worshipped. They didn't say how though. See they say God is to be worshipped. But they did not say how. There's only one way you can worship God. Let's go to John chapter 4. Let's go to John chapter 4. Let's go to John chapter 4. And you don't worship him talking about you lifting up some damn holy hands. Let's go to John chapter 4. Amen. John Amen. chapter 4. John chapter 4. Amen. John chapter 4. <clears throat> John chapter 4. <clears throat> John chapter four. <clears throat> John chapter four. <clears throat> 
When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Pay attention. Though Jesus himself baptized not. Man, that don't make no sense. The Bible just said he baptized in verse number one. Then to get to verse number two and say he didn't baptize. That don't make no sense. They said that Jesus baptized because he permitted his disciples to wash and not him. So they representing him. So since they're representing him, it's as if he did it because he permitted. He's the teacher. He allowed them to keep their ritual because they still didn't understand because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. But Jesus never washed nobody with water. Never. If he did, if Jesus washed one person with water, he could not have died on the cross. It contradicted everything that he said. He said, the Holy Spirit will baptize you. Mm -hmm. Only one can baptize is the high priest. Jesus was the high priest. After he died, he sent back the Holy Spirit. That's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And the Holy Spirit, this is what the deists don't believe. The Holy Spirit washes our souls, our suke, that's what the word soul is, washes our souls, washes our souls, the word soul is the word suke, washes our soul. We are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the Greek word for the word soul. You have a soul. God formed man from the dust of the ground. Breathe. Breathe into his nostrils. Blow. Breathe means to blow. He blowed air. Or he blowed spirit. He blowed spirit in the nostrils of man. That's why you inhale with your nostrils. That's why you take the air in with your nostrils and not in your ear. And the nostrils is formed right there with the mouth. You can You can't do that with your ears. You can't do that with your eyes. You, you can take in the air because that is what God put in you. You pull that in and it gets into your bloodstream and causes your blow, your blood, blood to flow through your body. That's why they say the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. In the blood, you got what you call hemoglobin. Yes. And that's the oxygen that's sent to your brain? That's correct. Oh, I thought so. Many of y'all don't know that. It's a whole different teaching. So Jesus, the baptism is the breath, is the air. That's why when Jesus died, he said, receive ye the spirit. And he blew on them. <laughs> and so now he said, now you go to Jerusalem, go up to the upper room, and you wait till you be been due with power on high. But I want you going to receive it because I had already breathed on you. So the breathing on them was the preparatory act for the reception of it when it came. Say it again, preacher. The blowing on them received the Spirit and he, look at it. Go to John, end of the chapter of John. John chapter 20. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Amen. And then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. The founding fathers don't believe that. They don't believe no man raised from the dead and came back and showed himself to these men. They don't believe that. That's not common sense. That's not human reason. That's not rational. You understand? Yes. That's not rational. That's not common sense, so they don't believe it. When he had... When he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you as my Father hath sent me, even so sent I you. Now how are you going to be God and his Father at the same time? And when, he had, and when he had said this, he breathed. Peace unto you as my father have sent me even so I send you and when he had said this he breathed on them and said unto them 
receive ye the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. On who? On his disciples that were shut up. It was how many of them? It was 11. 11. It was 11 of them. 11. And he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. Whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. How was they able to do that? By through the spirit, spirit the that they're going to receive when it comes in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. In Acts chapter 1, 2, 5, 8, 16. Acts chapter 2, 4 is when the Holy Spirit comes. Mm -hmm. he go, you go to Acts chapter 1 and 2. Acts chapter 1, you look at verse number 2. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1, verse number 2 until the day in which he was taken up after, after he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. How did he do it? After he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments. You look at verse, you look at verse, number, verse number five. <coughs> For John truly baptized you, hello, with water. with water, but you shall be baptized with the what? Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Not many what? Days hence. And he's telling them that they're going to be baptized with it because he already don't breathe on them. So when it comes, they're going to receive it. Mm -hmm. Verse number eight. But you shall receive power. Hello? Mm -hmm. After that, the Holy Ghost has come what? Upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. Verse number 16, mm -hmm. men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost, by the mouth, mouth of David. David. Well, it just told you David had the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He said the Holy Ghost through the mouth of David. The Holy Ghost by is the word dia, mm -hmm. through the mouth of David, spake before concerning Judas, which was guided unto them, they took Jesus. And he quoted for Psalms 41 and 9. Okay, then you get to Acts 2, 4. And it says, and they were filled with the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. tongues. Glosso. Mm -hmm. That don't mean no other, no, no, no jibber jabber. That <laughs> means the word is glosso, and that means other. Other is difficult or another glosso. That means another language. Mm -hmm. That's what they mean. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. Or glossals, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. As a fire and set upon each of them, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with other glossals. Glosso, that, that's where you get your word glossary from. It don't mean nothing but a foreign language. It's glosso, G L O S S A. That's where we get our word glossary from. It's nothing but a language. That's all it is. Pentecostal, not apostolic, Pentecostal, Church of God of Christ, they ain't got none special, man. That's Amen. denomination, man. That's ritual. They ain't speaking to none. You, they went out there, eat a ba ba ba, shot eat a ba ba. They ain't out there doing that. How they gonna preach the gospel like that? Men don't understand that. You guys are the stupidest. You, they got that from the white folk. Y'all yeah. Yeah. got it from the white man. You're white. Okay, so you see how they receive the spirit. And they were all filled with the other Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, what was noised abroad? That noise abroad that they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they were speaking with other languages. That's what's noised abroad. What's noised abroad is that they are speaking with other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. That is what noised abroad. Everybody say, hey, y'all, look, those, those, those men that was with Jesus, they speaking in a language, not Galilean. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because the, every man heard them speaking his own dialect. dialect. Mm -hmm. Every man heard him speak in his own dialect. That's dialectos. That's what that word is. That word is dialectos. It's D -a -le -tox. That's where we get our word, dialect. They heard him speak in their own dialect. Mm -hmm. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak with other languages Galileans? Why do you think they said it? They said these men are Galileans. How can they speak? Verse number eight. 
How hear we every man in our own dialectos? How hear we all men in our own dialectos? There shouldn't be a case. They say, how is it that all of us hear our own dialectos, dialect, our own dialect, where we was born at? Look what it says. How hear we every man in our own dialect wherein we were born? The dialect that they speak where I was born, we call ourselves Parthians. We call ourselves, they were speaking in Parthenian, Median, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, Rome, uh, Jews, proselyte, Cretes, Arabians. We do hear. The word hear means to understand. Mm -hmm. We do a kuo. They say we do a kuo. We do a k o u o, a k o u o. We do understand. Man, y'all is crazy. Y'all is crazy out y'all rabbit mind. Y'all white and don't even know. They say we do understand. We do understand. That's exactly why we define the word of God. That's exactly what it here means. They say we do understand them. We do, under, we do understand them in our own languages, our own dialect, the wonderful works of God. 